I used about two and a half skeins of the Burnett Blanket Yarn, super bulky, six weight in blush pink, and then just a few yards in the vintage white for the border. I love the border. I think it looks like it's hand stitched with um, kind of like a ribbon running through it. I hope you enjoyed making this blanket. I sure did. Let me know if you do. Okay, let's get started on this pretty plush baby blanket. You can chain any number of chains to make it as long as you want. We're going to be working lengthwise. I just chained 20 for my sample size. So find your second chain from the hook. You don't count this. One, two, and you're just going to go into that and make a single crochet. Pull that yarn through, yarn over. You have two loops on your hook. Pull through both. Normally I go into the back bump, but with this particular yarn, because it's so fluffy, um, it doesn't seem to make a difference. So we're just going to go right into the chain. So just a single crochet uh, in every chain. Pull that yarn through, two loops on your hook, and pull through both. So do that all the way down your row. I chained 80 for mine. I'll put the uh, measurements on. Okay, I'll meet you when you get to the end of your first yeah. row. I'm using a 10 millimeter crochet hook. You could go down um, all the way down to an 8. I do switch over to an 8 millimeter for the border. All right, at the end of the row, chain one. Let's turn. And now you're going to be working into the back loop only. We have front loop and a back loop. You're going to be working into that back loop with slip stitch. Keep them loose. Pull through two loops on your hook and pull through. Pull the first loop through the second loop and that's a slip stitch. All the way down Back loop only, right there. Make sure you keep it loose. To help me keep it loose, I try to remember to put it over just one finger, put that yarn, working yarn, and pull that loop through the next one. Now this plush yarn, this blanket yarn, it's kind of like chenille. It's not very slick. It kind of grabs, so uh, be sure that you're pulling that loop a little bit loose. Because the slip stitch is tighter than the single crochet, as you're working your blanket, you may find it um, slanted to one side. You can just pull on it. When I finished my blanket, I did need to take a t put a towel over it and just gently used a steam iron to uh, even it out. Don't let the iron touch the yarn because it will flatten it out and it will not come back to shape. You can put a towel over it and just very gently put the steam iron on top of it. Pick up the towel and then just kind of shape it how you want it. Mine, mine did end up coming in a little bit, so I um, put the towel over it, put the steam iron, and just used my hands to straighten it out and it did work very 
very well. So all the way down, back loop only. We're going to be working back loop only for the rest of the pattern. And, well, really the rest of the pattern. I was going to say until the last row, but we still work it in the back loop only. Okay, I'll meet you at the end of the all row. Right, I'm at the end of the row. Last stitch. You want to pull it over so you can see that back loop. To keep the slip stitch loose, pull that through even higher than this loop. Oops, and that will help. Slip stitch. Tried to do a single crochet. <laughs> slip stitch and a chain one. And flip. That was your row two. It's so soft, so cushy. That Burnett blanket yarn. It's really nice to work with. All right, make sure you're going in that very first stitch, right as it's coming off, the chain is coming off of that in the back loop only. Now we're going to switch back to single crochet. And this is what we're going to work all the way down. Back loop only. See that right there. There's your back loop. Pull your yarn through. Two loops. Wrap your yarn and pull through. It helps if you keep tipping your project forward so that you can find your back loop. If you're wondering what what the heck is that, um, it's a makeup sponge. I just put a hole in it with my scissors and ran it through. It helps uh, just make it a little more comfortable. I have arthritis in my hand, so it's just makes it a little cushy. Gives me something to hold on to. All right, so all the way down. Back loop only. Make sure you're pulling your loop up even with the other one. Just helps keep your stitches even. As you're working along, it helps to keep your work right in front of you. Keep pulling it along in front of you. Because if you start working way over here, your stitches are going to start coming in at an angle. They won't be even. It's um, just a good idea to tr keep your stitches as even as possible. So this is your single crochet row. Back loop only. It's a really easy blanket to make. You could certainly make this in a day if you know if you had most of the day to work on it. <laughs> It took me probably a day and a half, but it, that's because I was also working on the design, um, trying to figure out how I wanted the border to look. I did use another color in the border. I used vintage white. This is blush pink. I had some left over from another project. You could use any. I, you don't have to use another color. But it looked nice to have that contrast. I was thinking um, white or yellow, gray, um, green, like a real soft green would be pretty. Pink goes with a lot of different colors. But I used vintage white, with this, which is just a creamy white. All right, we're almost at the end of the row, or I am. <laughs> You have a lot more to go. Now you see this chain that's forming, this ridge, that's what's going to be the front of your blanket. And again, we're at the last stitch. Pull through and 
make your single crochet. If you want to, you can go through the whole stitch at the end, but if you do that, uh, it ends up pulling this up. It's not a big deal. It does keep the edge a little bit straighter. All right, chain one. Let's flip. When you're working the back loop only, it's it's just a good idea to start off with the yarn in the back. All right, that's what it looks like in the back. If you could just feel this, it's so soft. Again, make sure you're in that very first back loop. There's your chain. There's that very first back loop and we're switching back over to slip stitch. And that's your pattern. One row of back loop only slip stitch. One row of back loop only single crochet. Pull that through. Whoops. Trying to make a single crochet there. Pull it through so it's not too tight. You still may have issues, like I said, with it angling off to one side or the other. But if you just stretch it out, you may not even need to, to steam block it. I, I felt like I needed to. And it came out really well happy with it. So back loop only, pull that through, slip stitch. It's, it gets to be a little hard to find it, so kind of keep your, your work flipped over towards you. It makes it a bit easier. There it is. And that's what's going to form your next chain. And as you can see, this is actually going to be a vertical. It, it will be long this way and it will be longer than wide so make it as long as you want make your chain as long as you want your blanket to be and then the number of rows that you use will determine how wide it is and i will put what mine turned out um, at the end or at the beginning if i remember so continue on just uh Back loop only, one row single crochet, back loop only, one row slip stitch. And I'll do a few more rows and I'll come back and show you how I did my board. Okay, just a note, if you get confused, maybe you have to get up and leave this for a little bit and you're in the middle of the row and you can't remember if it was slip stitch or single crochet. The slip stitch rows are always going to be on the wrong side, which means the tail from your initial chain will be on the right. Your single crochet rows will always be on the right side, which means your tail will be on the left, and this is the pattern. The chains are on the right side. That's a single crochet row. And I know I want to do single crochet on this row because when I go in the back loop only, it's going to pull that chain forward and give you that nice ridge. So just a little helpful hint. Now, the last row is going to be what would be a single crochet row. But instead of single crochet, you're still going to go in the back loop only. We're going to do an extended single crochet, and it just helps it to look more like 
this bottom, the first row. So again, come in that very first back loop. You're going to start it like a single crochet. The only difference with the extended single crochet is you come in, yarn over, come through that first loop. I just consider it like adding a chain. And then yarn over and come through the last two loops like you normally would for a single crochet. So let's do that again. Back loop only. Pull your yarn through. I always tell myself to make a chain. Yarn over, pull through those two loops just like a regular single crochet, but it's the chain, the extra chain makes it an extended single crochet. And now they're going to look very similar, not exactly identical, but very similar. So remember to go in that back loop only. Chain. Yarn over, pull through those two loops, extended single crochet all the way across the row. I will meet you at the end of the row. That's how your blanket's going to look. Isn't it cute and so soft? Oh, so soft. All right. And you can see how it's pulling in a little bit here. Just pull on it, especially on that uh, slip stitch row. I want you to put the border on and steam it, it if you need to. It will be um, just perfectly straight at the end. So I'll meet you at the end of this extended single crochet row. It's your last row of the blanket. Okay, I did my extended single crochets along that last row, which is actually a side row because the pattern goes this way. So when you reach the end, chain one, and we're going to turn, we're going to come across the top here. Get some more yarn. We're going to do extended single crochets across the top. And there are a couple of places you're going to run your stitches through. In your single crochet row, well, this is extended single crochet, but we're going to count it the same. You'll find a stitch at the end and you want to go through both the loops. Don't come into the gap here, just both the loops with an extended single crochet. Oops, I missed a loop. It's hard for me to see the camera and what I'm doing. Okay, extended single crochet. Remember you chain one and then finish it just like a regular single crochet. Now for the slip stitch row, you'll see these little, looks like a chain here. Or stitch, go right in the middle of that. Pull it through and an extended single crochet. So there's your single crochet row. Find the stitch at the end. Go through both the loops. Make sure you're not in the gap there. Pull it through. Extended single crochet. And you're going to do that all the way down. Every time there's the slip stitch row kind of looks like a braid or chains or a rope. <laughs> Go in the middle of it. Some of them will be tighter than others. And an extended single crochet. So do that all the way across what is going to be your top. Look at it carefully. If you don't care for the way this um, slip stitch row looks. Go back in and fix it because that's where your the rest of your border is going to go. I'll meet you when you get down to the corner where your tail from your initial chain is. Okay, you've come across the top. We're at the last stitch, which is really part of that first row. 
and just make one extended single crochet. I'm going to turn. That's your initial chain row and your chains look like waves. And that's what you're going to work into with a slip stitch. We're going to try and make it look as close as possible to the last row. So we get the first row and the last row looking very similar. So slip stitch again, make it loose because you're going to be working into this. Find each one of these looks like a wave. You're just going to go into that one loop. Nice and loose. Oops, with slip stitch. Going to do that all the way across. That was just your initial chain row. Sometimes it's hard to make it look the same as the last row, but this is pretty close. There's what was our first row and our last row. They're about equal in size. Very, very close. The key here is just keeping your slip stitch a little on the loose side. Pull that down. Go all the way across. I hope I was in camera range there. Into each one of those chains, it looks like a wave. That's what it looks like to me anyway. Just pull it in front of you. You don't run the risk of slanting your stitches. Two more. Okay, we're okay. I'm going to turn. Now we're going across the bottom. Because remember, we're working vertically. And we're going to come right into this first corner stitch here. And we're switching back to extended single crochet. We're going to end up with one more on that single crochet row. And then at the end of the slip stitch row, same thing, go right in the middle, extended single crochet. Make sure you're going under two loops, but not into a gap. You don't want to leave a big, you don't want to go into a gap to leave a big hole. Go into the end of the slip stitch row right through that, what looks like a chain or a braid, a rope. <laughs> well, goodness gracious, come on through. So we have our corner. I'm going to pull over just a little bit. You want to be a little to the middle. <laughs> so keep going all the way across. And I'll meet you when we get here. We're going to switch colors. And we just have one more round. All right. Our last stitch is actually going to go into the first stitch of that last row. We're going to start an extended single crochet, go all the way until you have two loops on the hook, and we're going to switch colors. We're also going to switch over to an eight millimeter hook. 
If you want to, you could switch over to an eight millimeter hook when you make your first round. But with um, the round that we just did. I wanted to keep those stitches loose. Okay, I'm going to cut sleep tail and weave that in later. And I'm going to bring in my new collar. All I'm going to do is make myself a loop with the tail and pull it through. Let's tighten that up. Chain one, I'm going to go ahead and pull that tail into that chain one. We'll kind of keep it keep it together. All right, we're gonna we're gonna turn now. Now we're gonna do something a little well quite different actually. We're gonna do single crochet. determine my first stitch here okay we are actually going to come from behind that stitch we're going to consider that the post we're going to push that back put your hook through bring that yarn all the way through going to leave a little horizontal line there and finish out your single crochet. It's going to look fat because I included the tail there. You don't have to do that. I just think it helps lock it in. All right, we're going to do that again. I'm going to come from behind, push that stitch to the back, go around it, Grab your yarn, pull it, pull it in front of that post, front post single crochet. And you're going to end up with these horizontal bars. They look really cute. So go into that same stitch you came out of, push that next post back, got it in the back there, pull, kind of loose, pull it all the way through, pull your loop up even with the first one and pull through both loops. And that's where you're ending up with your, your horizontal bar. Makes it, to me, it looks like um, a hand stitched item. All right. That's where we came out of. So go, go back in there. You want that to go to the back, go around it. Grab your yarn, pull it around in front of that post, pull your loop up even with this one, yarn over, and pull through two. Now what's happening is you end up with two horizontal bars of the pink and one of the vintage white. Let me keep going because it gets cuter. <laughs> and it, it gets easier. It's, it's really quite easy. Just make sure you're making your stitches plenty loose. You can always come back and pull on these if they're not one is maybe much tighter than the others. You don't like the way it looks. You can always come back and pull on it. 
I should have made this stitch a little looser. If I were actually making this, I would come back and fix that. <laughs> it's my sample. All right, come through that same stitch. Push that post to the back. That just means you're coming across in front of it with your hook. Push that. See how it's coming to the back? Grab your yarn. Pull it through. That pulled it in front of that post. That's what makes it a back post. You push that post to the back. A back post single crochet. Normally it's a double crochet or a half double crochet. But I like the way this looked. And this is how it looks in the back. Just has a little bit of a braided look. It's really pretty. Simple. I think it finishes the blanket off nicely. Again, go in that same stitch you just came out of. Pull through. Make it plenty loose so that you can pull on that if you need to. You don't have to do that as you're going along. I did. Slowed me down. <laughs> I came through, I had to pull it out because I was writing down the pattern as I was going. Um, and I came through and did it quickly. And it didn't really make that much of a difference because I came back with a smaller hook. And if I felt like these little bars were too tight, I just pulled on it with the uh, smaller hook. And that worked out really well. So continue on till you get to the end of the row. And I'll meet you at the end of the row. Yeah, I just can't help myself. All <laughs> right, I'm at the end of my first row here. My last round, I guess that's how we say it. I come into that last stitch and around. And the only thing that will be different here is I'm going to make a chain one so that I can turn that corner. Keep this stitch particularly loose so that corner doesn't pucker up on you. You can chain two there if you want to and it it lays nicely but it leaves a little bit of a hole here. That's up to you. I, I did a chain one. All right, coming around that post. Same thing all the way down. As you can see, you can keep your stitches pretty loose. It's coming around the corner here. By keeping the stitches loose, it gives you the option to come back and pull, pull that through. Make sure you're going in front of that post. Make sure you're pushing it to the back. I had just recently made a, a shawl with a border that had front post, back post, double crochet. So every now and then on this, when I was distracted uh, I would do a front post instead of a back post and you you will know immediately it just doesn't look right but see what I was saying about it looking um it looks like it's kind of hand stitched there and it's really pretty on the back as well So just continue that all the way around. When you hit the corner, give yourself a chain one or a chain two, whatever, whichever way you prefer. 
I will tell you on my original blanket in the corners I did three in this very the first round of the border I did three uh, extended single crochets in each corner but I like it better this way that it got very bulky uh, this worked out I think much better it looks just as good if not better clean look I think that's why I, I, I tried all kinds of different borders and I like this one it adds a little bit of interest but it's not too fussy that's just enough okay I'm in the corner so I want to make a chain and that's a pretty big reach I may decide to come back and do a chain two there not sure oh these now I'm into the slip stitches you're just simply going to go around grab your stitches and go around those it's a little bit different Not much of a post. But as you can see, it's going to end up looking the same as this. Okay. Are almost the same. Close enough for me. So continue on. That's all you're going to do all the way around. When you hit a corner, eat, chain one or two, whatever you prefer. You can come along and even up your little stitches here if you like. And I'll meet you when we get. Uh, all the way back around. Okay, almost done. I'm at the last corner. We're going to come around. That last stitch. That rounds the corner. Now find your very first stitch. Go into there. Just pull it through. Now you're going to cut your yarn. We're going to do an invisible join. Give yourself a few inches. Instead of fastening off where you chain one and pull it tight, makes a little knot, we're just going to do an invisible join. I don't need the hook for that. I need my needle. Pull that tail through. All right, you'll need a needle. Get your yarn threaded through. All right, here's where your last stitch came through. You're going to skip this next one. Skip that stitch. Come into this one, front and back. Front and back go under from the front to the back. Pull it through. Now remember this is where your last stitch was coming through. You want to 
know where that is. Pull, but not, not tight yet. What you're doing is replacing that stitch. Come into the middle where that yarn is coming out, right there. And come in through the back. Oops, I'm so sorry. Let's try that again. That's where your yarn's coming through. Go into the middle there. Come along in the back and you're going to weave it in. But before you do that, oops, I've got my tail. <laughs> okay. Now, as you pull, see where it's coming in there? You're making another V stitch there. See? Front and back loop. So only pull it as tight as the other stitches are so it matches. Good. And now you just have two ends to weave in and a tail along with this end. And you have lots and lots of tunnels to go into to weave your ends in. Come over that back through, keep it in the same color, go once, and once more. Got that. And the same thing. Just weave in and out back and forth, one, two, three, and keep the pink in with the pink, find your tunnels, go in and out, come back, and one more time for good measure. And this is how it will look. It actually goes this way, and mine ended up being 38 inches long, and 26 inches wide. That was with uh, 80 chains at the beginning, and I have yet to count the rows. <laughs> Just make as many rows as you want until it's as wide as you want. That's uh, it's a good size baby blanket. All right, I hope you enjoy it. If you did, please leave me a thumbs up. It shows you liked it, and please subscribe. That helps my channel to grow, which helps me to be able to make these for free. If you'd like to see the written pattern, all my patterns are free. They're at www.i-crochet.com. And if you subscribe, you'll be notified when my next free tutorial comes out and uh, I'm working on a wobble stitch blanket and a granny square bag at the moment. So talk to you soon. The blanket came out at almost 38 inches with a chain of 80 to begin with and about 26 inches wide with 42 rows. I wish you could feel how soft this is. I think you'll love this yarn. Thank you.